As we move towards Christmas time, when the nights are colder and my nostalgia is at its strongest, I often find myself replaying certain games that just feel right around this time of year. From things like Minecraft to vanilla World of Warcraft, I feel like I can relax a bit more and think back to when these things were new to me. One game in particular that I always play around these winter months is a small indie title called Little Inferno. It is a game that, while on its surface is simply about burning things in a virtual fireplace, with no complex mechanics or story. But the more I play it in these recent years, the more I think about the deeper meaning hidden at the core of this relatively simplistic title. In this video, I finally want to explore these ideas and understand what the developers might be trying to tell us. And frankly, it's almost ironic. Little Inferno is a small indie title developed by Tomorrow Corporation and was released in 2012. It is a game that doesn't have a score or any state of failure and it takes place almost exclusively in front of a brick fireplace. It is a sandbox game that lets players purchase and burn a number of items from an assortment of catalogues slowly unlocked over the course of the game. The player also receives letters from an assortment of characters that slowly feed into sort of a narrative as well as a particular message over the course of the entire game. It won't last forever. The world the player finds themselves in is a world that is frozen, stuck in perpetual snow and ice. The fireplace is a way for the player to stay warm during this time and also provides a source of entertainment. Slowly over the course of the game, the player will be able to burn specific items together to complete a list of combinations. This rewards the player with stamps that speed up delivery times of the items ordered from catalogues, which slowly increase, time being a major factor in the game alongside burning things. Eventually, the player will form a friendship with one of the characters who sends letters to them. A character that provides a method for the player to look away from the fire, something that was never available to the player until the end. Burning a combination of items breaks the player away from the fireplace, and they can explore the town around them. A town that is frozen over, filled with all households doing the same thing, burning things in their entertainment fireplace. You encounter characters such as the mailman who brought you your items, you encounter the CEO of Tomorrow Corporation, and you also find the weatherman who takes you away from the snow to the promise of land free of snow and ice, where there is sunshine. Originally, when the game was developed, it was designed to be a satire on the similar themes found in video games, where players dedicate long amounts of time to performing tasks considered unrewarding. To some extent, you can see that, as the game revolves around the concept of burning items and waiting for more to be delivered in increasing stints of time. It's the same concept as daily quests and battle passes present in gaming, and while not as prevalent in 2012, they were becoming more common as time went on. I, however, think that the presence and repeated emphasis on time, and nothing lasting forever, combined with all the other elements present in this game, reflects on gaming in general. Little Inferno touches on topics that, upon reflection, are highly relevant to those who play games and relates to nostalgia in general. The biggest part about Little Inferno at the outset is the isolation from one another, combined with the character's inability to look away from the entertainment fireplace. The sole focus of the player is to look into the fire and burn more items. Ordering more things from the catalogues, only receiving letters from characters, never talking face to face, and you can only read messages and then burn them. The player character is too dead set focused on burning more items for entertainment and for warmth. That warmth of familiarity, the warmth of comfort, and an escape from the cold realities of the world outside your four walls. None of the supporting characters interact with you in person. It's always indirect, and if you don't have the accompanying music, it's quite a hollow experience. You could say that this is a representation of getting messages online, through Steam or other social media, but just ignoring them. We all know that for some people, gaming is a lonely experience. While they may have contact with people outside of their home over the internet, it never provides that direct face-to-face -face contact that people need to combat loneliness. And the fact that you burn the letters you receive in game, rather than responding to them, reminds me of times where I'd get messages from friends and simply ignore them, casting them aside. Because, in an almost ironic way, when you're lonely, sometimes you just want to isolate yourself even more. 
You'd much rather keep spending money on these items to burn, so that they provide you with the warmth that you've grown accustomed to. These items could be a representation of many different things to, to different people. They could be quests in an MMO, a mission in a single player game, or maybe even an entire game itself. The bright colours and excitable music showcasing all your choices in the catalogues. You purchase an item, you wait for it to arrive, and you're happy when you have it, and then you burn through it in that excitement. Gone. Just like that. A flash of joy and warmth, then back to the cold once again, craving the next item to burn, one after the other. There comes a time when you're flicking through these catalogues that are open to you, and towards the end the items become more sophisticated and complex in some ways, or perhaps more perplexing and the wait times become longer and longer. You often find yourself staring down a blank brick wall, waiting for the next hit of warmth to arrive, but even then some items don't react how you think they would when you try to burn through them. Some of them explode, a quicker flash in the pan than you're expecting. No slow burn to satiate your desire for a fire. Some will freeze, leaving you colder than you were originally. They may even freeze other objects you have together, possibly ruining your experience. All that waiting for the next saving grace to arrive, only for it to dash any hopes of warmth. These items are essentially your lifeline. They provide you with the money to keep buying the next hit. They become your sole focus that you may forget about the harsh winter outside your house. They become a part of your every process, mixing them in creative ways to get the next one quicker using stamps. But much like this game loves to tell you, there must be an end. Over the course of your time in Little Inferno, one character in particular will become self-aware, realizing she cannot look away from the fireplace just like you. Throughout your contact with her, you occasionally send her an item, and sometimes she'll send you something back in return. She's the closest thing you have to a friend in this universe. That is until something happens. Your friend slowly becomes obsessed with the flames and the warmth. Soon she becomes consumed by the very thing that was supposed to keep her warm, keep her safe from the outside. You believe her to be lost. Through her screams, the flames will rip through her house, and you believe that she's lost forever. You may feel something briefly during this time, but you will of course return to your fireplace and do what you've always done. Burn whatever you can, to forget the pain and focus on something else. That is, until much later, you discover that your friend did not in fact perish to the flames. She has discovered how to look away, to break free from the binds that keep you focused on the flames, and she shares this secret with you. It's then up to the player to decide if they want to keep burning through the same items forever, or maybe they do want to be free. If the player decides to free themselves, they burn a particular combination of items in their fireplace, all the items they've ever sent to their friend. Once that is done, the very same process occurs. Rip-roaring flames, sparks and horns sound off, and the player is presented with a very different perspective. We are taken outside our home to see the very walls blown away, to reveal that the player is now wandering through the snowy city. This unfamiliar and ice-cold realm is devoid of colour. It's without any sense of hope. You may almost regret your actions. Why would you want to place yourself here? Why not go back to the safety and warmth of the fireplace? But if you manage to continue on, you find people. People who can explain to you where you are and who you are. You receive one final message from your friend, and it serves as a beacon of hope to explore the world and do what you want, but also remember all the times you had while burning items away in your fireplace. The fireplace was never something to be ashamed of or scared of. Yes, you couldn't look away and yes, you burnt up all that time using it, but remember all the joy that it brought you and you'll treasure that forever. After this message, you journey further out of town to eventually find the weatherman who offers to take you somewhere where the sun shines and it's warm again far away from the icy city you've now left. A chance for a new beginning. A chance for warmth without the need of for fire. A chance to be free to do what you want. This whole segment, I believe, is a person's first steps to breaking away from loneliness. A single friend reaching out and offering hope. The exposure to the cold outside world only to push through to find yourself within reach of finding that warmth elsewhere. The icy, dense city is how you feel when you're lonely. It's complex, cold and isolating, 
A person can find salvation in the smallest things within the city, and your salvation was the fireplace. Or perhaps in the real world, games. Countless hours burnt away in front of the screen, all for the warmth it provides, that feeling of joy and a source to escape from the cold reaches of loneliness. And even when you break away from the fireplace, you're told you shouldn't be ashamed of it. You spent time in solitude with the warmth that it provides, and you should remember all the happy times you had and all the joy that it brought you. It's that sense of nostalgia, remembering the good times, simpler times. It's what helps you remember that moments in time are precious. While this game set out to be a satirical piece on how elements of games waste your time and can be unrewarding, the developers inadvertently created one of the most profound allegories of a person's struggle with loneliness and anxiety. All the characters have their roles that can fit into real life scenarios where you seek help or have that friend that gives you the means to find help. The setting of a cold, dark, dense cityscape being a perfect metaphor for someone's mental health during a time of anxiety and depression. The act of burning time away in a fireplace, providing you with the warmth you need at the cost of time itself. And that final send-off with your character and the weatherman, bringing a person hope to help them permanently, rather than offering them small bites of warmth. And the game's overall repeated message, it can't last forever, speaks to us all on many levels. Our time spent with entertainment won't be forever. We won't last forever. But the snow, ice, and darkness also won't last forever. The loneliness, anxiety, and confusion won't be here forever. There will always be that helping hand. As someone who's struggled with mental health, especially in the last three years, the more I come back to Little Inferno, the more I understand this. This game has slowly made me think not just about what I'm doing when I'm playing games, but it's also helped me reminisce and experience the nostalgia I have for all the good times I've had over the years and the friends around me. To me, games have always been an escape from reality, a way for my brain to focus away from anxiety and dark thoughts. I've used games as that source of warmth since the first time I ever held a controller or used a keyboard. And while the older I get, the more conscious I become about the time I spend on games, I also find myself remembering the times that have stuck in my head as some of the happiest moments in my life so far. I know I've always used games to divert my attention from the problems I have in my head, but games like this and many more have actually helped me understand my brain more than I could ever expected. I could argue that everything that I've experienced because of Little Inferno is the reason I made this channel in the first place. It's given me an outlet not only to express the feelings and thoughts I've had for years, but it's also allowed me to look back at some of the games I think back to fondly and really learn to appreciate everything that went into it and what I've gotten out of it. And while I know the purpose of Little Inferno is to show you the route towards true warmth without the need of a fireplace, or in our case, games. I think there is a balance you can strike between being stuck staring into the fireplace and leaving it all together. So the next time you're feeling lonely, anxious or low, remember Little Inferno. Remember that there will always be that spark of flame ready in your fireplace. Remember that there will always be that helping hand ready for you. And always remember that cold, icy feeling will never last forever. Thank you.